Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. I'm going to be talking about the Scandapsis plants today. I have three varieties in my collection right now, the Jade Satin, the Exotica, and I do have a True BI Moonlight up in a Wally Grower planter, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. I'm going to talk about how to care for this plant. I'm going to show you how to make this bushier if you're struggling with a thinning out Scandapsis and I'm also going to show you how to propagate it. These plants are often compared to pothos plants in regards to how to care for it, but in my experience over the last couple of years um, in learning about these plants, there's just a couple little subtle differences that I'm going to talk about through this video. Uh, so let's start off with the basic care for this plant. Like I said, they're very comparable to pothos plants. So they're very easy to grow. Um, in regards to light, these can uh, tolerate a wide range of light, anywhere from that low, medium, and high light. No direct sunlight. What does that all mean? Um, this Jade Satin, I have it growing on my uh, piano. It's about 15 feet back from a south facing window. Right now it's getting some pretty decent light. I would say medium light and the medium light ranges are kind of that 250, like 200 to 500 foot candles. I do use a light meter just to help me um, roughly gauge how much light I'm getting in a certain area. So that medium light is kind of that 200, 250 to 500. Throughout the summer, just because the sun is fairly high in the sky, it's not getting much light at all. So throughout the summer months, even though it's near, like, like I said, it's well, it's not near, but it's pretty far back from a south facing window. I consider it low light, so it's probably only getting 100 foot candles, maybe, in that area. I used to supplement it with a grow light, but I have since taken that away. And it still does really well. So what I'm trying to say is these can tolerate a, a wide range of lighting conditions, but obviously they're gonna grow much slower than if they were in medium or a really bright location. This Exotica is actually uh, fairly close. It's actually right beside the uh, Jade Satin here. So it's getting the same amount of sunlight. And again, this one's doing, whoops. I, uh, I do have, sorry about that. I do have uh, a couple little bobby pins in the soil, which I've pinned down uh, one of the branches here. Obviously it didn't take and it just fell out onto the floor. Okay, so back to the light. I do have another Exotica in a Wally Grow. It's on a west facing window, just off to the side. It's a smaller window with a house beside us. So it doesn't really get a lot of light either and it's doing really good. So I wouldn't even put it in higher light. I would just keep it in kind of at maximum medium light and that's just my experience with growing them um, and they do really well. Now for watering, I let these get absolutely bone dry. And one of the main differences between the Scandapsis and the Pothos, when a Pothos needs water, the leaves are gonna get a little bit droopy. With Scandapsis, the leaves actually curl inwards a little bit. So right now, you can see they are like fairly um, flat, I guess. Here is my Trubii. Uh, see if there's a good example of one. So when they are dehydrated or when they're needing a drink, they kind of fold like this one. Um, so I guess I should talk about this one. I recently repotted this into the Walla Grow about two weeks ago and it's, it's struggling. So there's a couple stems that are just not looking the greatest. So when I do water it, I will soak the soil. I'll let it come out the bottom of the drain hole and then I won't water it again until it's absolutely bone dry. I don't typically let it get to the point where the leaves start to curl. Um, so I'll probably water maybe once every two weeks, roughly. For soil, I'll show you the consistency mix up here in a little bit as I'm probably gonna be repotting my Jade Satin. It needs to be uh, upsized into something larger. But I like to use Promix's tropical plant soil and it's probably about 75% of the tropical soil to 25% perlite. It just allows for a nice well-draining soil. They don't like to sit in anything that uh, retains moisture for too long, otherwise it's gonna get root rot. Uh, for fertilizer, I use the Dynagrow Foliage Pro. Um, I'll probably dilute this in half and then fertilize through the growing seasons of spring and summer, and then I'll just cut it out uh, throughout the winter months. Otherwise, there's not really much else to it. Uh, they can tolerate regular house humidity. These are upstairs um, where I am here in the Canadian prairies. It's between kind of that 30 and 50% humidity. Uh, downstairs, it's a little bit higher here. I'm sure these guys would appreciate the higher humidity, might grow a little bit faster, um, but otherwise, I don't really have any issues with the just regular house humidity. For pest issues, I did have a, a Scandapsis Exotica in a Wally Grow up here previously. It did get thrips. Um, I believe I found a couple on there, but what I noticed first was the damage 
Um, sometimes you'll see uh, some yellow leaves. It'll look kind of like little patchy um, blotches on the leaves. And if you flip it on the back side, you'll see kind of uh, yellowing or browning. Uh, sometimes you'll see little black dots. That's actually thrip poop, which is kind of disgusting. Um, but if you see some damage or discoloration to the leaves, just make sure you look it over thoroughly because I have had uh, thrips on my scandapsis. What I did was I completely cut it back. I treated it. It grew again. It started to uh, push out some new growth, but um, I went camping and it got uh, severely underwatered and all the, uh, the roots died. So uh, that's the reason why I pl uh, planted the uh, Trubii Moonlight in the Walla Grow and now that one's not doing the greatest. It's quite common for these plants to send out these runners where they don't have any leaves along the stem. I don't know if you can see it there, but there's, uh, looks like two, maybe three nodes, uh, two nodes. There's one up here that don't have any leaves. Here's another one. Um, so I like to cut these back. You can propagate the cuttings. You can uh, place them in water, or I like to use perlite. I have better success with uh, propagating scandapsis, especially the jade satin in perlite. I once took some cuttings off of this plant, put it in water. It did absolutely nothing for, I would say, at least a month, maybe more. This is uh, about a year ago. Um, as soon as I put them in a perlite prop box, they exploded uh, with root growth. So here's that section of stem. When you cut these back, I like to cut it close to the node, like this. Just snip it off. When you make a prune like this, you will get new growth from the closest node, and sometimes you will get new growth or growth points from uh, nodes down the vine here. So making this one cut will produce a new stem or new vine, but it also might um, promote growth further along the stem. So that's how you can get um, the plant to look a little bit more bushier just from pruning it. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to stick this vine back in the soil. I've tried this a couple times uh, with no success. Again, I had those uh, hair clips in there. When, or the theory is, is if you stick a vine um, back in this soil, so those aerial roots are submerged under soil like that, they're supposed to root themselves into the soil and eventually they will push out new growth further along the stem, uh, similar to the uh, propagation or the pruning, I should say. And here's a yellow leaf, which I'm gonna cut off. It is lower in the stem. So I'm going to assume this is an older leaf that is dying off. It looks uniformly yellow. I'm not seeing any patches of yellow or anything like that. So this is telling me um, it's probably just an older leaf dying off. So now I have a longer stem like this. I'm actually gonna cut this empty section or this leafless section runner as well. And I'm just gonna cut that off similar to the other one. So I have a section like this. And I'm just gonna do the same thing with this stem. I'm gonna lift up all these leaves and I'm just going to place all of these nodes in contact with the soil. Just pushing that down. You may have to add a little bit of soil on top. I'm just gonna bury that um, just so it looks like that. Since tucking those vines in, I now have a pot that looks fuller. It's a little bit bare on the back here, but I also have these cuttings that I'm going to propagate in water. Once they grow roots, then you can actually just stick them back in the soil and those individual cuttings will uh, produce their own new stem and vine. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. I'm actually gonna keep these uh, leafless nodes on like that, and I'm just going to cut, just so you can see, in between two nodes like this. So I have a section like that I can propagate in water. I'll have a section like this that I can propagate in water. So there's two cuttings and um, I can do the same with this one here. I'm just gonna leave it as uh, two nodes to grow roots. And then this is just a little wet stick which you can put in a perlite prop box and it does have a little aerial root right there. This will grow into its own new stem as well, get uh, some roots and it'll eventually get a growth point. So I have uh, four different cuttings which I can propagate into an entirely new plant. I did have some exotica rooting in water for this video, but the water dried up and I forgot about it. It was just actually on the floor here, so I didn't uh, pay attention to it. 
it dried up and that the cuttings obviously died. So I wish I had some real live water propagated cuttings to show you guys. Honestly, if, if I were to choose between perlite or water for scandapsis, I would definitely choose uh, the perlite method as uh, the humidity in the boxes helps with a fairly quick new growth as well as root development. So if I were to suggest uh, a propagation method, it would definitely be the perlite prop box. Here is some pothos cuttings that I have rooting in water that is the closest comparison to what a scandapsis would look like if you were to uh, propagate it in water. See if I can get a cutting out. This has been rooting in water for quite a while, so it's got some pretty nice roots on all the cuttings. Uh, this is definitely ready to be potted up on some soil. You can see some nice water roots there, some secondary roots, and just a tiny little growth point coming off of the node. So when you propagate or when you plant this in soil, the new growth point will eventually push out into a longer growth into a, like its own new stem. So that's how you get uh, an entirely new plant or new vine from one cutting like this. So it's got one leaf, petiole, and then node. And obviously when you have a number of individual leaf cuttings, you can make it into an entirely new pot of plants or you can uh, stick them back into an existing pot to make them fuller, trade them, whatever. But uh, these cuttings, will look exactly like this with uh, some nice water roots and some new growth points. This is my large Wally Grow Exotica. These leaves, some of them are just absolutely massive for us. Like this one right here, like, look at this thing. It's about the size of my hand. These are gorgeous. Um, same thing with this. This puts out these uh, long runners. I like to chop them off. Uh, just promotes uh, new growth. Here's another one on the back side over here. This one it's fairly long, so I'm gonna cut this one back right in the pot back there. I was trying to look for an area where I've previously pruned. It's pretty thick. Yeah, right there, you can see. Um, there is a branch that I pruned right here, right here. This is an entirely new stem. I'm just trying to see if it branched out in any areas, which it has not. Let's see if there's another spot. I made a prune, sorry, you can't really see very well. I've made a prune right here. Uh, there's another one right here. It's branched out in a number of areas. Uh, there's a previous prune, it's branched out. Yeah, I've cut this up a lot, uh, just because it does get kind of out of control. I just stuck these cuttings in a container of water with some uh, philodendron brazils. Just gonna set that aside. Here is my soil mixture. This is the uh, tropical plant uh, mix and this is the 25% perlite. I'm just gonna mix it in just to something like this. Just something that is nice and airy. I love this perlite. It's Dutch treat. It's just nice chunky stuff. It's not, you know, fine perlite dust. So something like that is a good consistency that I'll use. Now let's take this out of the pot and pot it up into something a little bit larger. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is take this out of the pot. I'm gonna try and keep it all intact. I don't want to disturb the, uh, the individual stems as well as the, the root ball as much as possible. So I'm just going to loosen it up. Hopefully everything stays in one piece. I don't want it falling apart. I hate dealing with like individual stems. Okay, stay together. Okay, the roots look pretty good. It is just starting to get root bound. It's not really encircling yet, maybe a little bit. I'm going to loosen it up. Uh, I guess it is kind of pot bound. So I'm just gonna loosen it up a little bit. I'm not gonna snap any roots, just like that. So here is the pot. It is uh, quite a bit bigger, like here's the original pot. I'm gonna put it in this one here. So the diameter, it's the next size up. It's a little bit deeper. Uh, so I'm just gonna size it up here quick. So, whoops. I'm just gonna put a bunch of soil in the bottom here. Pack that down. Uh, I might have to dig a little bit out. That way it gives the roots a little bit of space to spread out. This stem it's overlapping. So I'm gonna try and tuck this one in. I'm just gonna leave it. See all, oh, okay. These stems are falling out. I'm just gonna push these down like that. And I'm gonna try and keep some of these. I'm gonna try and 
kind of a mess right now. See, like, look at this. This one doesn't, oh my God. How does, this one doesn't even have any roots. How is that possible? What on earth happened? Okay, that just literally fell out. It's a section with no roots. Okay, how did that happen? Okay, that is bizarre. Okay, this is turning into a, a disaster right now. Okay, this stem right here. I'm gonna snake this one out. Oh, okay, this is a big mistake. Hopefully I can get it back into a better position. Oh my goodness, I gotta rearrange. What is going on? Oh, it's just tangled. Okay, I'm gonna push these down. Okay, what I just did is when I pushed them down, I severed the roots. What on earth? Did I just destroy my jade? Are you kidding me? Everything just fell out. Normally you don't have to be like extremely gentle with these plants, but apparently with this one you do. So I'm going to tuck these nodes under the soil like this. I can't believe I just did that. This one, same thing. Okay. I. I know how I'm going to save it. I'm just going to tuck these stems into the pot so, so that it looks full, but it's not. I can't believe I just did that. Overall, I don't think it looks t like terrible. I think it looks okay. Uh, I'm not happy with how that repotting went out. That was a huge failure. I think I'm going to try and propagate these in soil. So I'm just going to cut this bottom leaf off and I'm going to make a hole in the soil and I'm just going to just to see how these soil propagate. I hope I'm not making a big mistake here but I'm just pushing these nodes down as far as they'll go. Okay, just like that. Okay, it fills in that area a little bit better as well. So I'll provide some updates with how the soil propagation does but overall like I said not terrible, it, w it could have gone a lot smoother, but that's just the, the difficult thing with dealing with numerous cuttings when you're repotting. Just going to put this back in its location, give it some time to uh, heal, let those roots rejuvenate, and uh, hopefully I will see some new growth. I'm not expecting any for, for quite some time because these are, uh, like I said, pretty slow growing. I'll show you a, a propagated uh, pot, a smaller pot, which was taken off of this plant, I think about a year ago and it's maybe gotten two leaves. I'm gonna go get that little pot. This one right here, it uh, has three stems in it. This is the newest leaf. And uh, this one right here, it's kind of interesting. It's got a little bit of a silver sheen to it. It's looking like it might be reverting. I'm not entirely sure, just a little bit of silver flakes it looks like on this one. So that's kind of interesting. I'm just keeping an eye on uh, how this one turns out, but the newest leaf is gorgeous. Look at that. Beautiful. So I think that's all I have to talk about in regards to care, uh, to make them bushier and um, obviously the uh, epic fail repotting. Um, so I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Thanks again for watching. Thanks to all the new viewers and subscribers. Welcome to the channel. Um, I really do appreciate the support. Take care everyone, bye.